Hey there, old chicken nuggets. It's your favorite messenger, Carl. Welcome to Grow TV. Welcome to Grow TV. Hosted by Carl. Where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to Grow TV. My, oh my, it has been a while since I've seen your little cute chicken nugget faces. How have you been? Good, good, good. That's always good to hear. Mate, <laughs> you know, just living the dream. Delivering mail with a smile. I'm at Andrew's house again delivering mail, so. <laughs> Whoa, here it is. Do y'all know what this is? This is a ticket. And not like a fun ticket that you earn at an arcade store or a ticket game thing. This is a bad ticket. It says it's from the Highway Ticket Division too. So that means Andrew got a ticket that involves his car. I wonder what it could be. What did Andrew do? I mean, there's a lot of laws out there for cars, you know? I mean, did you know it's illegal to drive a black car in Denver on Sunday? Or even in Alabama, you can't drive with a blindfold on. I mean, come on, that takes all the fun out of it. I mean, I even read one time it's illegal to drive with a gorilla in your backseat. I mean, how am I supposed to transport my gorillas to the gorilla trampoline party that I'm hosting? Anywho, I wonder what Andrew did. Did what? Andrew! Ah! Hey, you got a letter! Oh, really? Oh, no. What is it? It's a ticket. What? That's crazy. I have no idea you got a ticket. Um, what's it for? Oh, man. This is from when I visited my grandma in Nevada. What happened in Nevada? Well, I needed to go to town to get her some sugar for the cookies she was making, but we didn't have a car. So you couldn't make cookies? That's the thing. We had a camel in the backyard. A what? A camel. So I rode into town and apparently it's illegal to ride a camel on the highway in Nevada. Oh, well, I, well, I, uh, uh, I, that's just a weird story. I know, but now it looks like I'm in big trouble. If I don't pay this ticket, I might go to jail. Well, then you'd be like Paul and Silas. What are you talking about? Paul and Silas went to jail? What? You didn't know about that? I just read it last week in Acts chapter 16. Really? How did I miss that? <laughs> Probably too busy riding camels. <laughs> yeah. Anywho, the story starts off with these guys being followed by a, a local woman. And she had been famous for telling people's fortunes and futures. Was she with Paul and Silas? No, she kept on following them and yelling stuff to the point where Paul got like really annoyed. Well, everyone gets annoyed from time to time. You get annoyed too? Do I ever annoy you? I'm, I'm not gonna answer that. So Paul get annoyed? Oh, for sure. So there was this lady following him and Silas around. She was being really obnoxious, which means she was being really loud and unpleasant. And she was making it challenging for them to do God's work. Paul somehow knew it was because she wasn't all that well. So he called upon the name of Jesus to make the evil spirits in her go away. And it worked. But that made certain people very unhappy. Why would they be unhappy? Paul and Silas just helped her get better. Well, when she had the evil spirit in her, she was able to predict the future. Now, I don't know if she actually could or she thought she could. Anyways, she made a lot of money for her bosses doing this. After Paul and Silas got rid of that evil spirit, she didn't do that business anymore. And now her bosses were real mad and they were out of like a ton of money. Oh, I get it now. So what did they do about it? Well, those people grabbed Paul and Silas, dragged them through the streets and presented them to the authorities. Oh no. They told the authorities that Paul and Silas were breaking all the laws and causing trouble. So they had Paul and Silas beat up and thrown in jail. Are you serious? As a timeout, they were both locked in a cell and had chains around their feet. Oh no, I, I bet they didn't do anything wrong. I bet they were so angry. Well, they weren't. What? They actually began to pray and sing inside the jail. Are you kidding me? How cool is it that they found joy even being in a tough situation like that? Right, but you'll never guess what happened next. Earthquake? Nope, it was an earthquake. Wait, did you say earthquake? Yeah. Oh, well, good guess. Yes, a huge earthquake shook the whole prison. And it was so powerful, it broke open all the doors and chains. No way, so they were free to go. Yeah, they were. And when the prison guard woke up, he saw that all the cell doors were open. And he assumed everyone had left. Oh no, he's in big trouble. Right, he was so scared, he was about to hurt himself. But Paul called out and he said, hey, don't harm yourself, we're all here. Wait, they didn't leave and, and they could have escaped and they wouldn't have even been caught? Yeah, he couldn't believe it. He ran up to Paul and he said, hey, how can I be saved? This is blowing my mind right now. What happened next? Paul told him, believe in the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved. You 
and your household. So they all got up, washed themselves off, and immediately the guard and his whole family were baptized. Then they shared a meal with Paul and Silas. Holy moly, what an incredible story. Right. Now, obviously, you won't go to jail over your simple ticket, but God will help you in any situation, no matter how big or small. I guess you're right. Maybe I shouldn't worry as much. Because if God can take care of Paul and Silas in prison with their problems, surely God can take care of me and all of mine. Right. No matter how wacky things get in our life, we can remember that God always sends help to us, the children. But it's not always how we expect God to help, huh? What do you mean? Well, think about it. Paul and Silas could have escaped when the earthquake happened, but they didn't. They knew if they stayed, God would do something big, like save that guard and his whole family. Andrew, you're completely right. Wow, was that story cool or what? I mean, it had fortune tellers, prison cells, earthquakes, and salvation it had everything oh and that's what reminds me of our big idea for this week which is god sends help so let's say it super duper loud okay one two three god sends help great job kids now you can hold on to this message as a promise god sends help never forget it oh um, and one more thing to remember <laughs> next time you're in nevada remind your parents to drive the car into town not a camel, okay? Got it. Thanks, Jada. Um, I'm not going to drive one. I'm just shopping and looking. Bye, kids. <laughs> Classic crawl. See you later, kids. Bye. Thank you for watching, and tune in next week for a new episode of Rule.